So a couple months ago, my sister approached me about making this dress-up center for my niece's birthday, and she knows at this point that you have to give me many months' notice in order for me to get something on time. So it worked out nicely that I could really make something nice. Um, I pulled a lot of inspiration from old steamer trunks. I've always thought they were cool objects, and while I'm not knocking the design she sent me, I knew I could make it much cooler, much more functional, and, and fun to play with. So this is pretty much the finished product. It closes just like a trunk, but opens up so you can have all of your stuff on display. Um, this is it filled with all of, all of her stuff ready to go. And the next couple of videos are basically going to be showing you how I make it. So a bonus to this project was I've been making a lot of built-ins recently, so I have a ton of quarter inch, half inch, and three quarter inch ply laying around the shop. So this is going to be a little overbuilt because the majority of these scraps are three quarter inch ply, and I didn't necessarily need that thickness in all um, portions of this build, but like I said, I had it hanging around. This is movable. It's a fairly easy two-person carry. It's not super heavy, but it's quite big. I also knew wherever it was going it was probably going to stay there and it was most likely going to stay opened. I don't think they're going to be closing it a lot but you do have that option. So I was originally thinking of making plans for this but with all of the accessories and all of the lumber I put into it this project materials alone would easily cost well over $500. It really only worked out because my sister bought all of the extra stuff as her portion of the birthday present my portion of the birthday present was I already had all the lumber and the sweat equity in making it. It's just not really a reasonable product uh, for people to make, especially to sell. It would be a little ridiculous. So I started off by making the whole piece is made from three um, essential cabinets. I decided to join all the sods with box joints because I made this box joint jig not that long ago. It works really well and if I've learned anything in making things for children you want to overbuild them more than anything else. They climb on things, they pull on things um, that adults normally wouldn't do so it's better to overbuild it than to underbuild it. And um, I'm happy I did that because whenever I give something to a kid, it, within seconds you're already wincing because they're throwing it or tossing it across the room. So these joints are going to be real solid on the corners, and that's basically all I did. I started with a back cabinet. I knew I was going to be putting um, a red carpet in this and a, and a vanity mirror, so that was going to be the back cabinet. So I didn't need it to be real deep, and I knew the side cabinets would be holding the clothes, so I based those dimensions off of the coat hangers that my sister provided me with. So that's basically where I pulled all the dimensions from. But like I said, I'll show you a lot of the dimensions as I go if you want to build something similarly to this but I won't have set plans um, and that was basically it I like I said I started with that back cabinet I had a rough idea of what I wanted this to look like but most of this I built as I went um, based off of, of how things were working out now like I said I am using scrap on this did not buy any lumber for this so I didn't have enough quarter inch plywood in the shop so I had to make a little divider which is essentially an extension for the back in order to be able to to um, fill that out so that's what this portion of the video is that's all it is it's a three quarter inch piece of ply it's about two inches wide I cut two grooves in it so this thin plywood I have I could make it in two sections so you didn't have to go buy more that ended up being a little bit of a pain because it was an added dimension in the back of the box, which you'll see later. But like I said, it was worth it because this quarter inch cabinet grade ply is, is uh, quite expensive these days. So that's how those pieces fit in there. Like I said, it's just basic box joints. I put a groove in the bottom to hold all of my panels and everything slides together. So I had this in place. I can measure for where to cut this now that it's in place. and um, adding for the thickness of, of uh, the box, the bottom portion of the box, that's where it needs to go. I can cut it and then put this whole thing together. That box joint jigs works great. My dado stack is older, it probably needs to be sharpened. The only problem with making uh, box joints out of plywood is there's a lot of tear out involved um, in this project. 
but I knew this was going to be paint grain material, so that was something I didn't really worry about. And then I could glue this all together. So that was a pretty simple process. You want to make sure these are square. If these aren't square, it's going to come haunt you further down a line, especially since I wanted these cabinets to line up. Like I said, I knew that this would mostly be open in their home, but you can close it if you want to. So once I had that back portion and it was glued up, I could go through and make the two side cabinets the exact same way. You could see I rough cut out all my parts. I have all of my sizes um, if you if you want to make something similar to this. And like I said, the depth of this was based off of the coat hanger. It's the exact same process. I'm going to go through and put box joints on all of my ends and then join the two pieces. So this is a fairly large piece of furniture um, once it's all said and done. Originally, when I was thinking about this, I wanted to make one huge box and then cut it so everything lined up perfectly. I didn't have enough material for that. So this is the material I had, and um, I ended up making everything in multiple sections. I decided to make the back box first, because once it's glued up, the dimensions could shift a little bit. And then, like I said, I made my two front dimensions, the widths, based off of the center point of that back um, that back box and same process I made all the box joints I made sure they fit together I put a quarter inch groove on the bottom about half inch up from the bottom I can measure based on my panels and cut all my panels now these ones they weren't as wide so I was able to use single panels in there you can see I can measure between the two tick marks of where those box joints line up to cut the panel and then those slide into place this is pretty simple simple work simple construction especially if you have that jig if you don't Using something like pocket hole screws will work on this. I think you might have some racking issues, but um, it is just uh, a temp, uh, let's face it, I think I made this about four feet tall, which if you go by average calculations, by the time she is six or seven, she'll probably have outgrown the height of this at, um, at least. But that is quite a ways away from now, so she should get some good years of use out of it. And then that is basically what this looks like, my three pieces. And from here is where I'm going to start building out all of the insides. Um, I don't connect these until I think the next video was easier to work on them separate at first. So here's just, you could pause this if you want. It's just all of my dimensions, my final dimensions. And like I said, if you're using different joinery, if you want to use rabbits or dados to join all this, you can just adjust those calculations. So earlier this year, I made a built-in closet. So I have this small piece of leftover pole, which was nice. I didn't have to buy that either. So the first thing I did was calculate and mount two clothes racks in this. This is just yellow pine. I kind of measured that I wanted these to be three inches. The pole itself is an inch and five eighths. So I just went through, I calculated for my cutoffs um, on the saw, which is eighth of eighth eighth of an inch, which is why you see those little skinnier lines in between all of the bigger boxes. And then I could go through and drill all of these holes with hole saws and um, spade bits. I like to go about halfway through, flip it over and finish it so I don't have any blowout. And then two of these will have to have um, cuts in them so that you could slide that clothes rack in and out. So that was pretty simple. I just added some 45s. I cut those out with the jigsaw and then I'll be able to go through and um, just chop all these pieces up. And then I'll have my four brackets. They make these out of metal if you don't wanna make these yourself, but obviously it is much cheaper to just use some scrap in the shop than buying the metal, metal mounts for these. That's what they look like. On stuff like this, it is going to be paint grade, but if I'm using visible hardware, which I don't use a lot in my work, but I didn't want to spend the extra time to hide screws for something like this, I do like to go through and measure everything out and make them symmetrical. It looks a little bit nicer when you have visible hardware if you do do that. And then I just drilled, um, put some inch screws in there with the point sticking out a little bit so that I could line it up where it needs to go. I could press down, it will kind of press fit in place until I add those screws. 
all of this is temporarily attached because it's going to be easier to paint something like this with all of the parts separate. It's a little bit extra work, but trying to trim in all of these small spaces would be a real pain. So you'll notice as I build this a lot of stuff, I'm not gluing together in that moment, but it will be glued together when it's permanently attached. And then I just cut the pole. I always make it about a 16th inch um, less than the width so that it could slide into place. You put the pole in the solid hole first and then it can it just goes right up into that lip. Now the height of this one was based on how the coat hanger goes over the hook. I made it low enough so that you can easily lift um, the coat hanger over that pole and then down again. So that is important. If you put this up too high, you won't actually be able to put the hangers um, on the rack. So then for this one, I'm making this, this side of this box. I don't think I start the second box in this video, but this one, I decided to mount the clothes higher and then there would be storage on the bottom. On the other one, I flipped it. So the clothes are mounted lower and there's storage on the top. So this one's gonna have a drawer as well as two shelves for shoes. So to start the, the, the area where I'm gonna put the drawer, I just put two cleats. I wanted it to be a nice size drawer, but also I wanted dresses and, and longer clothes to fit in this one. So I kind of calculated where the dress would fall, and then that's where I decided where those cleats would go. Those are just three quarter inch scrap ply. Um, you could see I had a, a straight edge that I just mounted those cleats to. I always have all my holes pre-drilled. It makes life a little bit easier. With those cleats in place, I could cut a half inch piece of ply to sit on top of there, and this will be the beginning of where I make that drawer box. So once I had that, I can measure for the drawer box. This is also half inch ply because I already had my uh, box cut joint jig out. I decided to make this also with box joints. Once again, a little overkill, but um, I, that jig is perfect for stuff like this. It, it makes pretty quick work of it. And then those are the measurements for the box. Like I said, if you want the measurements, you can just pause the video. I show that piece of paper um, as I build stuff. And then I could just go through and, and put the box joints on this. I also find this method a little bit easier because the size of your box is always a true dimension. You don't have to worry about subtracting and adding for, for dados and rabbits. You can see on that piece, especially all the tear out involved. And like I said, I think it's a combination of this dado stack probably needs sharpening and the veneer on this plywood is, is just so thin. Same process, I'm adding that quarter inch groove on the bottom. Once it's all together, I can measure for that panel on the bottom, cut it and, and uh, put it in place. So that is what that looks like. I specifically made it so it fits inside those cleats. Um, and it's also gonna have mounts on the side for my runners. And that is how I'm going to put this in place. So this is that box glued together. It slides in place. I'm gonna lift it up about a 16th of an inch, take some measurements, and those will be where um, I'll, I'll mark the box for the runners. To attach the runners, these are just poplar. I just roughly plane the edges so they're rounded over. You can see I used a spacer to mount them so it's the same on both sides. And then I could cut a shallow dado on my box. If you are a woodworker, you'll notice I cut these dados on the wrong side and then I cut them with the wrong side facing out. So multiple miscuts on this. This was the end of the day. I was rushing. I wasn't paying attention. Once again, this will be painted, so it's not that big of an issue. The mist cut I made on the front and the back, I just patched with some wood. You could see that here. And then um, I finally got it right and made those cuts. Like I said, I lifted the box about a 16th of an inch off of the floor, marked for those dados, and made those shallow dado cuts and then that slides in place. If you don't want to buy hardware, this is a great way to make drawer boxes. This has been in my shop for about three months. The temperature has changed quite drastically. That drawer still works really smoothly. Just put a little paste wax on your slides and your runners and it works quite nicely. I roughly measured for the front and then you can see I used some playing cards to space out the front to get me about a 16th inch reveal. This is plywood, the whole thing's plywood, so you don't really have to worry as much about the, the dimensional changes of lumber with plywood. So I got a pretty tight reveal on that. 
for the pole because nothing can be sticking out in case in case they ever do want to close this I just drilled a uh, inch hole and that's how that that drawer box is going to work so I was pretty happy with how that turned out and then to finish off this one box which will be the end of this video I just add a tiered shelf on top of this it gains a little more space especially if they decide to put some shorter hanging things on here it'll give you two levels of storage for for shoes so I just made some little cleats on the side at a half inch ply to make it a little more stable. The topper, I cut a rabbit into each end and that just fits into place. This will be something that will be glued and bratted into place once this is done. But for the time being, um, I, I, like I said, it was easier to paint apart. And then you could kind of see the finished look of that one on the side. In the next couple videos, I'll tackle the rest of this.